Tolerance. Today we're going to cover a little bit more about wire EDM. Today I wanted to show you some of the, the very most basic setup that you can have in a wire EDM. We have a ground piece of material that we have just two simple clamps on and we're holding it off the edge and we're looking to put a shape in on in this end. In this particular instance uh, we need to do some maintenance on our the lower head of our, our wire machine just to clean it out. We keep breaking wire it's good material there's no other reason other than a little maintenance that's needed in the lower head so this setup works for a lot of different things these are typically inserts that we make and then we will tab them off and i'll show you an example here four parts that we made and these little connections are called the tabs and after we're done with the shape which you do a rough and then typically four skims we'll go ahead and set it up and we will wire off the tabs and after they're done wiring, there's, we typically use two th leave two thousandths of stock on that tab and then we'll grind that with our surface grinder to finish them. Let's look at the basic setup here. This is a vise, uh, a wire vise, and it's used to do, um, to hold square blocks. In this case, we have a, a core block that's gonna get wired, and we're gonna set it up here on the granite. Typically, we can put it on something super flat, clamp it down, and then take the whole thing, once it's clamped, over to the wire machine, and that will help keep it flat and straight. I do recommend putting it in the, in the wire machine and then also indicating, making sure that your block is perfectly flat before you start wiring or picking up holes. But this is a great vise for doing a lot of different a lot of different blocks and, and features. Another thing it can be used for is like high tolerance pins, uh, ground dowels where you may have to put a hole through a dowel like this, which would first be fast hold, that, but then could be uh, wired um, uh, to, to match a, a core pin going through it. And in this, in this case, this is what we did here. This small hole that's in there now, we had to wire um, for an, a small tiny ejector pin. So this was fast hold and wired through this long pin. But this is how we would hold it in the, in the machine, in the, the wire machine. Now I'm going to show you what we do. This is just a kind of a, a unique way or a trick way to do a setup for a setup or for our sunspot holders. Um, all we have is a piece of carbon in here and we cut it to a certain size so we can find the center of our master which is our holding block. Um, so we usually will put this in here like this, close it, and then we'll pick up on the, with the wire on this edge and then tell it that there's the center. So it's an inch 999. And then we'll pick up center this way and then we'll be in the center of our fixture. And we use this for a lot of different things, but this is just a quick, simple fixture that works well for a lot of different applications. Here's a, another fixture. I don't want to leave out the 3R setup that we have also. I'm going to just kind of show you where this is set up in the wire machine typically. Um, we made 64 of these inserts and this is how we did them. This is actually the end of our uh, stock. But here's uh, two of the inserts that we made and this is how they were tabbed. So it wasn't a straight cut on these. They were actually set in there like that. This is kind of difficult to show you, but once they were cut off, we had to set them up and grind this feed. You can kind of see the finish on this as a surface ground um, angle. Um, but we were able to make lots of these inserts um, with with one setup, and it, it was very efficient, and it worked very well for us. Here's another example of Dan setting up the machine using the 3R uh, setup that we have and we're going to skim these slides that we have on here and once he's done skimming them then we're going to go in and do some finish milling on the Makino after that but this is just an example of how uh, we utilize this setup to do work in and out of the wire machine
just so I can indicate it. Yeah, exactly. You got a 3D printed slide with not a very nice finish, but you got Dan hooking it up with a straight edge for us to indicate from. We're going to wire this to expose the conformal cooling circuit that's inside. A 3D printed stainless steel slide for one of our molds. And the reason that it's done this way uh, is because we couldn't put a water circuit in it. And this is the water circuit that goes in there to help cool this uh, part or cool the mold while it's running. And we wanted to wire this off to show that it's actually in there. Um, but it's a, it's a very, very cool technology that we can now take advantage of uh, and utilize it to give our customer a better um, a better option for cooling inserts because cycle time everything is about cycle time when you mold um, and quality so this is very cool technology and we're getting more and more involved with it one thing I wanted to explain when we have stuff that's 3d printed uh, it usually starts with a, a platform uh, for for the print to begin building and on the bottom of this you can see this has already been cut off and we'll show you in the wire how that gets cut off but typically there is something that has to be removed um, for you to have a base point to start from and this is how all of them get done most of the time it's with a wire EDM because you, typically the material will be hard and difficult to mill through or saw cut so we basically use the wire EDM as a saw and that's how that comes off the build plate or the base plate. Here's where we're using the wire EDM as a saw. We're not after accuracy, we're simply after speed to get this cut off this build plate material or supports. This is another example of a slide that we had printed. Um, and here's basically how it was. This was the build platform that I was talking about. And then this is something that we were able to machine in our five axis machine. And then when we were done with it, we wired this whole entire thing right off. And that gave us our slide. I wanted to show you the very finished product uh, for that, that 3D printed slide. Um, after we did all the wire work and benching and polishing. This is what you typically do for wire EDM is this right here is a feature on a, uh, a brooch and it's, and I'll show you what it looks like once we get out there, but my wire is going to start down here and then it's going to kick itself on an angle and it's going to wire these teeth all the way across to this end and it's gonna stop roughly 50 thousandths away from the end so that that will be tabbed and the slug doesn't fall into the tank and it could break the head or, or cut wires. So once it stops with an M1 stop at this point, I will manually go out there, uh, press the button uh, for stop or start, and then it'll cut through this last 50 thousandths of material. And then I'll, I'll grab that part out of the tank and then let it do the four skim passes. Uh, in this case, I think it's three. Um, and I'll kind of show you what that looks like just as a simulation. This is all unmanned. This will take about two hours to wire all these teeth. And then the machine will stop when it gets to the end and wait for me to come out there. And then I will press start. It's gonna cut the little piece off and then go to the, the skim passes. But this is just an example of a tab and 
why you want to do it because the steel can fall into the tank and cause damage. <laughs> That was actual real-time wire. This is a time-lapse of that detail being done, which is roughly about 20 minutes long. This is the slug that came off of that uh, brooch that we wired, and it's very sharp, and you don't want this to fall in your tank and let the machine keep moving because it could cut the wires, it could damage your machine or break the head. So it's always good to uh, have a stop tab that you can be there when it falls, and that way you're, you have a much better chance of uh, getting a good result. We're gonna talk about how flushing on the wire is super important, and when you have to make something that's very, very tight tolerance. Um, let's look at this block that we looked at earlier. Most of the time what you wanna do is have these flush cups on the head, you want them to be touching the bottom and almost touching the, the top as well. This gives the flushing the best chance for getting all of the debris out of the cut while you're cutting and keeping the wire cool and clean. And that is a, a key to going fast. Um, the other thing is sometimes you can't have the heads close to the part and you have shape on it. So you wanna slow, typically you slow down the cut itself. And especially for tight tolerance holes, uh, dowel pin holes or ejector pin holes, or even a real snug fit insert, uh, the kind that you probably have seen um, on YouTube where you see blocks that you can't see the seam, and all of a sudden you see three different parts. This particular block has a hole that's in the middle that's gonna have to have real tight tolerance to it. So my flush cups can't get down in there, um, at least not on the top. On the bottom, it'll be fine. Uh, but the the top here it can't reach so what we have to do on in our program is we slow down the speed of the cut on the rough and the skims and you use some other technology in this particular machine we use heads away or uh, the precision cut and it will actually give you a, the results you're you're looking for when you have a condition like this this is an example of four inserts that we're going to wire and what a typical layout would look like um, using a block that we found in the in the shop that we ground the top and the bottom and I actually showed you out there uh, what this one looks like but the wire is going to start over here and it's going to walk around this detail of these inserts and they're going to leave a tab so this is the tab area here there's four tabs we're going to walk around there and then this whole outside section will come off on the rough and then we'll go back in and we'll skim all these finished then when we're done with that, we'll have a, a cutoff that will knock off this tab. And then we'll have to grind um, those four areas, or actually one area on all four of those inserts. And those will be complete at that point. But that is an example of what a, a, a pretty simple basic lineup would be to cut four inserts identical. This is considered a punch detail for wire EDM. Uh, I call them inserts, but they are the male side of a feature, so typically they're considered a punch. And this is just a time lapse of picking up the block on the corner and then actually starting that profile uh, in, the, in the wire EDM. This concludes our episode of Learn to Burn with Practical Machinists. Remember to subscribe and like. Um, wire EDM is a big part of the shop, all kinds of shops. So we use it big time in mold making, but it's, it's used in dies, punches, and all kinds of different um, applications. So I'm always interested to hear what people want to see. Um, and if there's something that someone has that's real specific, um, we'd like to hear about it. So thanks for watching. All right, welcome back. Did I say all right and okay? Okay. <laughs> of wire EDM burning. Dude, that's there. Here's some of the more redo it. <laughs>